This is an Algebra 1 sample question number 9, part A. It says, Leia would like to earn at least $120 per month. She babysits for $5 an hour and works at an ice cream shop for $8 an hour. Leia cannot work for more than a total of 20 hours per month. Let X represent the number of hours Leia babysits and let Y represent the number of hours Leia works at an ice cream shop. Which graph shows the set of points that represents the number of hours that Leia can work in order to earn at least $120 and work no more than 20 hours per month? Before we start, I am going to just put up here what they told me. And I am focusing on this sentence right here. It says, let X represent the number of hours that she babysits. So X will represent babysitting. And Y will represent um, hours at the ice cream shop. So I'm just going to put hours and I'm going to put ice cream here. So that's pr pretty important to figure out. All right, so here are my two equations. I'm going to work with the easier one first. She's going to work some hours at babysitting, some hours at the ice cream shop, but she cannot work more than 20 hours per month. So in case there anybody's confused, hours plus hours, when you add them up, cannot exceed 20 hours. And that's why we chose that inequality. The other inequality is a little harder. She babysits for $5 per hour. And then she also works at an ice cream shop for $8 an hour. So that's her pay rate per hour, and she wants it to be at least, or bigger than, if you think about it, $120. So if that's confusing, this is total money babysitting plus total money at the ice cream shop, and she wants it to be bigger than, so because she wants to earn at least $120. So that's how you do system of inequalities, or even if you want to think about a system of equations, it has to deal with usually um, hours plus hours equals total hours and money plus money total money all right so how do we graph these i'm going to do the same method i did before where i'm going to do x and y intercepts so the way you would do it is you would pretend that you don't have an inequality you would put an equal sign and we're going to take time to plug in zero for y to find our x intercept 8 times 0 is 0, so then you get 5x equals 120. If you divide both sides by x, you'll get 24. So then that means it's 24 comma 0 as your x-intercept. All right, and now we're going to do the same thing for the y-intercept. So you have 5 times 0 this time because you want to know your y-intercept. And I'm going to put the 0 here. 5 times 0 is 0. So you have positive 8y is equal to 120. Divide both sides by 8 and you get 15. So now you get 0, 15. So I'm going to go to 24. 24 should be, since these are in terms of um, 2.5s, because it goes from 0 to 5 with two boxes. So 24 should be around here. And then 0, 15 is here. Notice that none of these black lines are hitting it at all. So it's wrong. All right, so this one, 0, 15, and 24 is around here. Notice that both of those lines are not hitting it as well. Wrong. 0, 15, and 24 is over here. I do have a correct line hitting those two points. So C is in the running. And then E, we have 0, 15, and uh, the 24 is around there. So C and D are both in the running. Now that we did that, we went from having four choices to only two choices left in the running. That means you made the probability 50% chance of getting this right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to erase 
A and B. We'll link this all out. And what we're going to do now is make sure that this guy is also correctly graphed. You can kind of tell the answer for this one because if you just put an equal sign and then take turns putting a zero for y first, you'll get x plus zero is equal to 20. x plus nothing is 20. So that means you would put a um, point at 20 comma zero. And after that, if you took the time to plug in zero for x this time, so let me rewrite this one, and this time you would put a zero for x, you would get zero plus y is equal to 20, which means that y is equal to 20, zero, 20, they were both 20s. You can kind of tell when something like that's gonna happen. So just make sure that 20 exists for both the x and y axis. So C is still in the running and D is also still in the running. So now if you look at it carefully, it's just a matter of where do you shade? So I'm gonna show you what that means and how you can check for the correct answer. So before I go for the correct answer, I just wanna show you that when you shade, this is just an example. If we look at the red, either you're shading above the line or you're shading below the line, okay? And that's what they're asking for. And in case you didn't know, but when they show you two equations, that means that that shaded spot, it's not just the red, it's the combination of the red and the blue. So, you know, where they overlap to make purple. So they're asking us for the shaded, so for this area or for this tiny area, which one works for both equations? How do you do this? You always have to do it with a test point. So I'm gonna choose a test point and the test point I'm going to choose is five comma five. I always like to choose twins and the reason I like to choose a test point where the coordinates are the same number is because when you're rushing, there's no way to mix up your X value and your Y value if they're the exact same number. So test five comma five for both the red and the blue. Okay, if it works for the red and it works for the blue, that means this is your correct answer. However, let's say it does not work for one of them then that means automatically D has to be your answer because 5, 5 was not shaded. A little confusing, but I'm going to plug it in so you can see. So let me do some space for the red. So first I'm going to test the red X plus Y is less than or equal to 20. I am going to plug in by five. So this is what I'm plugging in for both. So you get five plus five. Is that less than or equal to 20? Is 10 less than 20? This is a true statement. Let's go to the blue one. 5x plus 8y has to be greater than or equal to 120. Then I'm going to take the time again to plug in my numbers here. 5 times 5, 8 times 5. Okay, 5 times 5 is 25, 8 times 5 is 40. And then you get 65 is greater than 120. 65 is not greater than 120. So that means automatically C is incorrect because 5, 5 did not work for both of them, which means that D was your correct answer for this one.